Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to Epic Walkthrough. Um, I don't remember where I put the one where I highlighted your questions, and I'm very sorry. So um, we're going to walk through this as best we can. Um, from memory, what um, I recall is someone asking about similarity statement. A similarity statement is the statement that says the two figures are similar to each other, okay? Right. So if we're going to show that these two triangles are similar, and notice that we have to determine whether they are or not first, but if they are, we're going to write the similarity statement. So it would be something like triangle, whatever that triangle's name ends up being, triangle Fred, is similar to this other triangle, which we're going to name Triangle Jose. I don't know, okay? Triangle Fred is similar to Triangle Jose. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, they're right here in front of me. Okay? So you would actually put the triangle's names after you have decided whether or not they are similar. And so the main question is, how do you know if they're similar or not? Right? How do you know? Well, let's go back to your notes. So we're going to go back to our notes for 7-2, and we're going to look at the definition for similar polygons. There it is. And there's two things that, there have, that has to happen in order for them to be um, similar. The angles, the corresponding angles have to be congruent, and the corresponding sides have to be proportional. Okay? So looking at this first one, are our corresponding angles congruent? Looks like it, right? So it looks like A corresponds with D. So this angle is congruent to this angle. And it looks like C is corresponding with F, and those are the same measure, which means D must correspond with E. But the big question is, is are they congruent? And how do you know? Back to our notes. All right, flipping through, nothing about, we're looking for something with tr two triangles maybe, and we know something about two of their angles, but we need to know something about their third angle. So this doesn't look like it's it. We're just kind of going backwards now because it seems vaguely familiar, like maybe we've heard about it before. Mommy? Yeah? What about the pink highlighter thing? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Look, we have this thing. Doesn't this kind of look like the setup we have? Yeah. Yeah. So we can, thank you. We can totally use this thing, the third angle's theorem, that says if two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles of a second triangle, then their third angles are congruent. There we go. There it is. So we know that since we have these two congruent and these two congruent, two pairs of congruent angles, then the other angles have to be congruent. Okay? We can write all that. The next thing to do is to show whether or not the sides are proportional. Because that was the next bit of that definition. I'm going to go back up to similar things here. See, we have to see if they're proportional. This means that if we write their side lengths as fractions, then all those fractions are going to be equal to each other for all of the sides. Okay? And notice that these are corresponding sides. So now we've got to find our corresponding sides. A corresponds with D, C corresponds with F, so AC corresponds with DF. So we're going to write that fraction whatever that fraction is. Which, uh, which is assignment? Uh, I was going to ask you a question on this. On the 4-4, okay. All right, come and have a seat as soon as I'm done with the walk there. Okay. All right, so you're going to write the fraction, okay? Reduce it down to simplest terms or turn it into um, a decimal, your choice. And you're going to do the same thing for all the other sides. So here's A, B. A corresponds with D. B corresponds with E. So we're going to figure out what that fraction is. Repeat for the third side, and if all if the, all those fractions are equal, then these things are proportional, the sides are, 
And since we already showed that the angles were congruent, then these two triangles are indeed similar, and you can write their similarity statement. Make sense? You're going to have to write the name of the triangles. If you choose his name to be ABC, then you have to make sure that the other triangle goes in the same order. A corresponds with D, B corresponds with E, and C corresponds with F. So this triangle, if this triangle's name is ABC, then this triangle's name is DEF. You can pick those letters in any order, but once you've picked the order for them in one triangle, you must follow that order for the other triangle. Right? Pick an order that we're happy with. Yep. All right. If for whatever reason you find that they're not similar, you have to explain your reason. Either the angles weren't congruent or the sides weren't proportional. Okay, those are really your only two explanations as to why they're not going to be similar. The next thing that I was asked was, what's a scale factor? These fractions. That's it. <laughs> if they're similar, those fractions of the scale factor, you're welcome. Okay? You can do the front page. These polygons are similar, which means their angles are congruent and their sides can form ratios, fractions, that are all equal to each other. Use that to find the value of x. You're writing a proportion statement and then you're cross multiplying and solving. That's it. Feels pretty good? Okay. I'm not going to bother writing this up. All right. On this one, I think the biggest question on this was viewing area perimeter. Okay, so this requires a little bit of art. Okay, at home I have my TV and it looks like this, and I have my TV stand that it sits on, it has little doors on it, and on here I have the brand new Xbox that my daughter likes to play on, and she has her little Skylander port. You don't have to draw all these little things, I'm just I'm going crazy. <laughs> Right, and we've got our DVD player, and right, so here's our TV, okay? The viewing area is this in here where all of the video games show up on. So the perimeter of that is this perimeter. That's the viewing area. The, the screen, yeah. Yeah, you could have just said that, thanks. Okay? So that's the viewing area perimeter. Read through it. Let me know if there's anything else that's confusing. Um, just a question on this like. All right. Example. Well, while they're reading it and taking a moment to see if there's anything else on there that's making it so you don't think that you can start it or get through it, let me try to answer the question. Can you give me an example on how you want it done exactly? Because it's like confusing. Sure. So it looks like because these are midpoints, you're able to say that they're congruent to each other. Mm -hmm. This was the given, and then reading this. And then what allowed you to go from their midpoints to those pieces are congruent? Because the midpoint is the Because the midpoint is the definition. Yes, and yeah, yeah, I had put the definition. Perfect. So that's the reason. And then from there, how do you get angles are congruent? Because of the, the vertical. <coughs> okay, then that's a whole different section. So that's probably here. Yeah, it looks here. Yes. Yeah. So these two don't connect, but these connect. Okay. Once you have these, you're going to get rid of this. These two things come together. You have two sides and you have an angle. You've got to figure out which of your congruent triangle postulates and theorems go here to give you that those triangles are congruent. Mm -hmm. So you're just missing this little piece right here. Okay, so. So this, are these right? Like the definition of the midpoint, which was this one, but yes. I'm going to rewrite it right mm -hmm. now. You just want to, you just want to line up. See how I put this on here? This is what's given. Mm -hmm. Two goes here by definition of midpoint. Mm -hmm. And then it looks like you're going to here. Mm -hmm. So this stuff is going to go here. But isn't it side, side? Mm -hmm. so what's the reason for this? Definition of side. What's the reason for this? For the angle pair. This then, probably the side. Okay, so this is right. It's just need to find this out. Exactly. Okay. okay. All right, so anything else on number five? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Number six, scale factor shows up again. 
Remember, scale factor is just that ratio between corresponding sides. So now that you know what scale factor is, you should be able to get this. Um, how do you feel about finding the perimeter of this thing? Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know. Can we do number six? Yeah, we can start it to set up. All right, so some, let me zoom in here a little bit so we can see a bit better. All right, so I'm going to color code. I hope that's okay with you. All right, so looking at this, now normally these marks show congruence, but we're told right up here that these polygons are actually similar to each other. Okay, so instead of marking congruence, these hash marks are really marking correspondence. Okay, so it looks like E is going to correspond with T. Oh, and look, that totally makes sense. Look at the names. E T. E T. They correspond. Yeah. Okay. So E T. Phone home. All right. So there's kind of our um, our hint. But they within the figure itself, this marks congruent. So if this is ten, then this is also 10 because within the figure those lines do show congruent so all of those are 10 can we find the perimeter of that polygon yeah totally now we just need to figure out what the scale factor is which means we need one bit of information from one side on this polygon and one information of the sides on this polygon well which one do we have information on 21. The 21 and the 15. So write your fraction, either 15 over 21 or 21 over 15, it doesn't matter. That's your scale factor. You multiply that scale factor to each side to generate the new side. Make sense? Mm. Sort of. All right, we're going to use it as proportion. So let's say I wanted to write AB over PQ, okay, which means our scale factor is 15 over 21. We wanted to use this to find out what RQ is going to be. Because if we can find RQ, then we know two other sides. Okay, so I'm going to start AB over PQ equals BC over RQ. And I've picked those because those are the corresponding sides that I'm interested in. Now I'm going to fill in what I know and then like a proportion cross multiply to solve for the rest. So I know that AB is 15 and PQ is 21. Um, I have BC, which is 10, but RQ is the one that I am missing. So I'm just going to put a big circle dot there because I don't know what that is. I guess a variable will work. You could use a variable too, whatever you prefer. Whatever you like the best. If you like the dots and the squares, use that. If you prefer the variable, that's okay. Cross multiply, solve for the unknown. Repeat for all the other things that you're missing. Okay? And that would be your, well, and then you have to find the perimeter, which is just add them all up. Well, after you cross multiply, this information is going to be here. So this number is going to go in here, which is going to be the same as this one and as this one. You have to repeat it again for this guy over here because he's very sad and lonely. So repeat all this, all this again but with information for this side. And then you will have numbers all the way around here and all the way around here. And perimeters found by adding up all those signs. So then you just go in and add them all up and say the perimeter of this thing is this and the perimeter of this thing is this other number. So x will be 15 for that one? Um, I don't know the value of x because I haven't done the cross multiplication. So what is, how, do you know, how do you find out x? Cross multiply. That times that is equal to that times that. It's all for x. No, whatever. You're going to do 21 times 10, whatever that is. I think so. 
And you're going to set that equal to 15 times x. Write it. Don't, don't try to do this in your head. Write it. 210 equals 15x. You're being lazy because you don't want to write, but you're trying to do it in your head and you're getting confused. Don't write it down. Take the weight off your brain, man. Now, how do you get rid of the 15? I don't know. Divide it. Divide yeah. And so after you divide it, whatever 210 is divided by 15 14. is. 14. She has a calculator. I am a wizard. You are a wizard, Harry. I mean, Claire. Yay. <laughs> All right, you're going to do the same process for RS. I'm not going to walk you through it. You're going to do it on your own. But it's the same process. <coughs> All right. We got some swimming pools. We got the Minette family. We have the Gaudet family. It's French, so you don't pronounce the final consonants um, unless there's a vowel because French. Um, they want the similarity statement and the scale factor, and they want it only if the pools are similar. This is very much like the very first page, but in word problem form. Okay? So that one should be fairly easy. Okay? Looking at this one, um, the big question was, what um, is the word regatta? Um, I said, I think it's Italian and it's probably some kind of boat racing. Um, and one of the, my students in another class said, yes, it is boat racing. And I went, awesome. But I still promised I would Google it for you. So there's my Google. And indeed, a regatta is a series of boat races. Okay. So um, boat races has nothing to do with um, being able to find the value of x. It just gives us a setting of where these boats are. So we can basically go, awesome, I learned a new word, and then ignore it for the word problem. So All right. what do we do on this one? Well, yeah, they're similar. Same thing. Find the value of x, set up as a proportion, cross, multiply, and solve. Okay? Nine, same thing. I recommend that you draw a radio tower and you draw a yardstick. Number 10, you have to explain how to construct a similar polygon. I'm going to give you a hint. Are you ready? Here's your hint. If I can find the section in my notes. Hello, notes. Hello, oh, I'm going the wrong way. I am going the wrong way. Hi, dilation construction. You create similar polygons for me. All right, so go back to dilations. See how to do that, and that should help you um, figure out how to explain how to construct a similar polygon, okay? All right. This is a challenge sheet, pre-APs. You must try this one. Try it on your own. See how far you can get. Regular students, do this after you're done with the rest. Give it a shot. I will take it for additional consideration. But by no means do you need to stress out about this page if you're struggling with the first part of the assignment. Okay? All right. Thank you very much for joining us today. Miss, can you give me a pass? Yes.